media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, recycling trade publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Rick Ackerman, editor of the newsletter Rick's Picks, his website RickAckerman.com. Welcome back to the show, Rick. Always a pleasure, Jim. Thanks for inviting me on. Rick, some interesting days on the stock markets where... Uh, yesterday, everything was in the red. Uh, I think the Nasdaq slightly climbed into the green, but we've seen several days like that. What's going on? Have the markets topped out, or again, are they just saying you got to rotate into different sectors and buy the dips? Well, Jim, I think we're in a topping process here, and, and uh, the reason it's so elongated and complex is that everybody knows the market's topping. So uh, the market's never going to be easy opportunity in the way of thinking, well, we'll all just get short. Of course, if that happened and the market couldn't go down because all the sellers would be, they, they'd already be satisfied. So, um, so yeah, I think we're in a topping process. And ordinarily, I, I like to use my hidden pivot method, which uh, mainly works A, B, C, D patterns. But in this case, I'm seeing so many bearish head and shoulder patterns, uh, in, not only in key bellwethers like Apple, but in the broad averages. And um, I, I typically don't use the pattern because uh, it tends to be everywhere you look for it, uh, the, the head and shoulders, if you're uh, uh, kind of focused on it, it, it turns up everywhere in all time frames. So if you extrapolate out head and shoulders tops for the market uh, and uh impose it, superimpose it on the E-mini S&P chart, we'll need a rally right now uh, that that doesn't quite reach the old highs, but which goes for pra- perhaps another four to six weeks, and then we're going to have a nice head and shoulders top on the S&Ps. So that's uh, kind of what I'm looking for, but uh, you, you have to keep an open mind about it because uh, it doesn't always work out the way you think it will. Have people uh, been taking profits from this and uh, settling on holding some cash here so if there is a, a major dip that they have the resources to buy it or are they still buying on margin um, speaking of margin yeah margin buying is uh, about the highest it's ever been in, in the history of, uh, of humanity and um, you and I have talked numerous times about what I call the barbell strategy uh, it is taking a couple things that nobody really likes very much out of favor. And of course we know no one's ever gone broke buying things that uh, for a time were heavily out of favor. But I like uh, the combination of uh, treasury bonds versus gold um, for reasons we, we've talked about that uh, if you try to construct a scenario where both are going down in in some future where we have hyperinflation or depression or de- deflation or whatever. Uh, it's very hard to logically come up with something that would cause both of those things to come down. Uh, correspondingly, there are many ways you could see one or the other going up, and there are even some pretty logical scenarios where both go up. So I like that hedge, but uh, the, the the one caveat that I would put out there right now is that bonds are not quite uh they're not quite ripe for a buy. I expect uh, yields to go just a little above uh, 3% on the 30 year and that's when I think there'll be a buy. Now on that uh step to higher interest rates are those steps going to be taken sooner than later? We're hearing from Bloomberg that the Bank of Canada may do its first quarter percent hike next week oh i tune all that out i i think that all the the charlatans and quacks that run the central bank they're they're so 
obsessed with uh, quote unquote managing our expectations that that it could make you dizzy just listening to those imbeciles. Um, so I, I just look at the charts, and I did have a commentary out uh, last week or week week or two ago that explained why the Fed would not actually maybe the one out there now the, the fed doesn't really have to tighten because the market is doing it for them and that's that goes hand in hand with what i was just talking about three percent on treasuries and when the, the the several reasons the fed has to tighten number one um the they've got this asset bubble that's a concern to everybody uh number two they do work for the banks and of course uh, when they tighten and it widens the yield spread uh, just a, a little bit. You get another 50 basis points in the yield spread. That's worth probably six or seven billion dollars to a company like JP Morgan. So, but on the other hand, the Fed, uh, it, it understands that if it actually did tighten, if, if it started pushing interest rates up, uh, with announcements that that's what it's doing, it would, it would pop the asset bubble. So uh, Powell doesn't want to be so directly associated with the collapse of the market. So they're going to let uh, the market take rates higher, and that will give them the wherewithal. That's one of the one of the reason they have to push rates higher, or at least to wish them higher, is that it gives them some running room when they start to loosen. So the relatively few uh, commentators, forecasters, who have been saying that the next move by the Fed will be to loosen, they're going to be right. Now, uh, the interest rate hikes they're talking about a quarter of a percent at a time. If they put, uh, why do it in three little steps? Why not just do it all, all at once and get it over with? And would three quarters of a percent be enough to make much of an influence at all on the markets or, or, uh, mortgage rates? Yeah, it has plenty of impact, uh, 75 basis points, because you have to realize that that it subjects all borrowing in dollars to that higher rate of interest. So it's not just mortgage rates, it's the entire two quadrillion, two plus quadrillion dollar derivatives edifice. Every dollar of it will be facing a higher, uh, higher real rate, meaning everybody who owes dollars, uh, will be paying back in dollars that are harder to come by. So, um, so, yeah, 75 basis points is uh, catastrophic. And I guess if I were running the show, I probably would go for it in one, just one move to get it all over with rather than to have the uh, three wrenching 25 basis point uh, hikes. Now, uh, of course, they're trying to tell us the idea of the higher rates is to try to wrestle inflation down with uh, three quarters of a percent be enough to rustle down inflation that's running at 7%. You, you know, the whole idea of rust, wrestling down inflation, it's really pretty silly. We can't. The, the bubble is so big, it's so completely out of control that you just try to wrestle it and, and it, it, you're, you're dealing with, uh, you're going to set a death spiral in motion. We don't have a bubble that can be managed, that it can be contro- controlled in any way. I think the best you can do with the bubble we've got is to pray that uh, that it for the impossible that, that the bubble somehow uh, deflates without any critical damage to the economy. But that's that's impossible. So um, so for a long time it's just been inflate or die. And uh, when we finally start to deflate, which is what we've been avoiding for the last decade. Uh, we're going to be nostalgic for the kind of inflation we're seeing now in the consumer economy. Is there uh, any way to uh, deal with inflation as an investor? Are there certain things you can look at that, yeah, that's where I should put my money, I'll make a lot? Uh, well, in an inflationary environment, even idiots make money. The, all the big money managers, for one, uh, they just throw their everyone else's hard-earned other people's money at, at six stocks and everybody gets rich. So in, inflation, everybody gets rich. Even homeowners with no stake in the market get rich because they're, of course, benefiting from the wealth effect. But the deflation that's coming 
will be an entirely different matter. Nobody's going to get rich. You don't get rich in what is fundamentally a deleveraging event. Everybody makes money off leveraging and, and inflation of assets. But, uh, in the deflation, the geniuses will be the ones that are, that hold on to 10% of their current net worth. We'll have more with Rick Ackerman right after this. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Rick Ackerman. Rick, what's your opinion on gold and junior gold miners? Well, I like gold, uh, but not in the way that some of the real uh, celebrated gold bulls do. You know, you hear $5,000 gold, oh, that's just going to be the start before gold really takes off, or even $50,000 gold. I, I don't subscribe to any of that. I think that gold's going to do just fine relative to all other classes of investable assets. In other words, it's going to hold its purchasing power uh, quite well. But but that doesn't necessarily mean that gold's going to rally at all. It could sit where it's going, and if everything else is falling, then you're, you're going to do really well in gold. So I think gold is kind of an all-weather asset, and it, it, it has to be uh, – it's you have to see it as bullish that, that the bears have not really been able to inflict much damage on gold. I see it as being in a holding pattern uh, in uh, under kind of big picture conditions that are not that favorable toward gold. But it's it's been more than holding its own, and it's uh, the last week or so it's been in a very nice rally. Uh, I'm open minded to the possibility that this rally is is really going places, but um, but if it is. Uh, I think it, it implies that something in the very big picture is changing, and that would most likely be that we are in a bear market in stocks. Uh, what about uh, owning uh, junior miners? Uh, what's your opinion on that? Well, I, I have a little more difficulty coming to the bullish case for the miners. Uh, if you visit a mining site, I used to do uh, a lot of junkets with uh, Al Coral and, and a group of of guys and when you see how much energy labor and huge machinery it takes to get gold out of the ground uh you, you understand that it's a very it's very sensitive to, to fluctuations in energy prices so here we've got um crude oil pushing up to a hundred bucks a barrel and um this is it makes it much harder to make money uh mining for gold or silver so uh so I think depending on what energy prices do, uh, you could find that there's a lot of pressure on the uh, mining companies and the, the uh, junior exploration companies. The International Energy Agency is warning not enough is being put into oil and gas exploration right now, and uh, eventually that will lead to a shortage of oil and gas. Is that the area to take a look at? Because so many institutional investors say oil and gas is a dead industry. We're not going to put money into something that's not, quote, green. But that will mean gasoline at uh, over $2 a liter here in Canada, over $6 a gallon in the U.S., which means obviously yeah. somebody's going to be making money uh-huh. there. So should you be taking a look at investing in the oil and gas business? Uh it's always been it's it's always been a tough call um you know fracking this the fracking story has been kind of all over the place over the last 5 years but uh and and it looked like we had such a glut for a while that it turned off a lot of the uh the fracking investment and some fracking capacity was shut down it's not quite as difficult as shutting down a lot of uh of rigs on oil fields but uh, just the same, the cycle to shut them down and then bring them back into play is, uh, that's, you're talking years there. So uh, uh, it, it's almost unknowable how the energy supply and demand equation will play out over the next few years. But certainly if we go into a bear market and a corresponding global depression, 
uh, the demand for oil will decrease, and uh, that's certainly not going to be good for uh, in, in capital investment in that sector. The Bank of Russia is talking about banning cryptocurrency trading and mining. Uh, do you see any impact? No. I mean, crypto is in its own little speculative world, um, and if it's kind of it's if for all the violent moves you see in crypto and all the talk about it it's really chicken hearted it, uh, bitcoin has no guts at all uh it will go higher if it sees that the stocks are going higher meaning speculative fever is heating up then bitcoin will start moving with it and if bitcoin becomes really emboldened with this idea that the stock market is in rip roaring bull mode again then Bitcoin will even take the lead in the speculative frenzy. But that that's how it's going now. Bitcoin is just sort of a, a, a go-along. Uh, it, it just makes a lot of noise, but it's not, it's not, um, it's not going anywhere unless uh, stock market mania continues. Rick, anything else that we should be keeping a close eye on right now? Um... I'm not sure. Uh, I try to keep a close eye on things just to know really what what the forces are that are still that remain in this in this dying bull market. But I think the bigger picture is what you need to keep, if not a close eye on. You need to understand what what's coming. Um, just to relate it to what I said earlier about bonds being a better buy when when yields get up to three percent on the thirty year. Um, when that triggers a full-blown or is part a, a catalyst for a full-blown bear market in stocks, uh, when that bear market comes, the economy will nosedive and yields could conceivably go back down to where they were a couple years ago. And of course, if you take long-term yields from 3% to under 1%, that implies the potential of enormous enormous capital gains so so that's what i like about uh, bonds again we're not quite there yet but uh when we get up above three percent uh i wouldn't hesitate to to jump into into uh, treasuries rick thank you so much for chatting with us always a pleasure jim i appreciate your inviting me on my guest has been Rick Ackerman, editor of the newsletter Rick's Picks, his website rickackerman.com. If you have any questions for Rick, we'll ask that question for you if you send it to info at howstreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at How Street. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.